And here we have a box from Elector. I was clued up that this one would be coming, and apparently it's uh, some sort of uh, educational uh, kit or something that they've got. Something to that effect anyway, but uh, let's try and open this sucker up and uh, see what's inside. Here we go. Ah, it's always a bit of tape you didn't cut. Ta da! Oh, here we go. Hey, thanks, Stephen. Flow code for no coding, no limits for the Pic Micro. Oh, we've got some Pic Micro stuff. Microcontroller development software, easy to use graphical interface, fast and flexible. And apparently this is called the Elector Pro Pic Micro Starter Kit. Hold, but uh, hold on to your hats here. Price, 600 US greenbacks. Woohoo! That's, uh, it's not a cheap uh, kit at all, but it's uh, designed for uh, the educational classroom or something like that. So let's uh, have a look what we get here. We get a power supply. One of those multi-adapter uh, things for oh, 600 bucks. It'll want to be good for 600 bucks. But I think it's all in the uh, software. Like, I think, you know, the hardware is not necessarily 600 bucks in hardware, but I think there's some magic uh, software as well. These um, bloody power adapter things, have they got an Aussie one? They do have an Aussie one. There we go. Jeez, these things are... Does that come... No, that doesn't come off. So... Should, yes it does, it slides off. It's one of those slidey ones, is it? Hang on. Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh. These seem to be all the rage these days, all these products. It comes with like a custom thing and then you get the different adapters. I'm seeing this more and more with uh, gear these days, is that they, it, it can, if they're well designed, like this one seems reasonably well designed, I guess. There is a, you can see the catches in there that's not too bad and if they actually retain fairly well like that and fairly rigidly then um, I'm I'm all for it because uh, it means that they don't have to supply different ones they uh, for different parts of the world they just supply different adapters there's the UK one and uh, there's uh, that European I think um, so no US one. Oh yes there is there we go weird Yankee two pin thing so uh, there you go. Um, that's just a bit in the side. That's got nothing to do with the kit. But I thought I'd uh, talk about those because I am seeing them a lot. We've got a uh, 16F877. That seems to be uh, the uh, go-to uh, pick for a lot of stuff these days. And uh, USB cable. And oh, we've got some good looking boards in here. We'll have to check them out one by one. And what we have here is an eBlox uh, EB006. Um, looks like a multi-programmer, a PIC programmer, so uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's just a PIC programmer. Let's, <laughs> there's a million of these things on the market. It comes from, let's have a look, matrixmultimedia.com and uh, that's .co.uk and that's who was on the uh, box as well, matrixmultimedia.co. So it looks like they're doing the uh, eBlocks programmer board, that's for the PIC programmer. And these are the three boards it comes with. It looks like we have a switch board, doesn't do much else except uh, contain eight switches. There's another board with eight LEDs. Why they couldn't just combine those on the one board, I've got no idea. Probably because the interface um, for these modular blocks or eBlocks, as they call them, eBlocks, there it is, is that. Um, they're only using a D9 on either end, so presumably um, you've only got ground uh, plus your eight data lines to uh, feed back to your main controller board. So uh, that's pretty limiting um, to limit your, uh, uh, your development system around a D9 like that. Although I guess they, you know, they stack together end on end like this and they plug in, that's reasonably okay, but geez, you know, Separate boards for eight LEDs and eight switches, I don't know, and there's one for an LCD. And interestingly, um, even though they say this is all sort of new, there it is. Um, copyright 2004, Matrix Multimedia. So I'm not sure what the new 
part of all of this is. Maybe it's the new uh, software that uh, goes along with it. But yeah, I mean, here's the concept, I guess. Haven't read any manual or anything like that, is that you can plug these modules into your, uh, this looks like it isn't just a uh, microchip pick, pick programmer board. It, it actually, um, you can run your programs on there as well and you can stack your boards on like that to get your various functionality. Well, it's okay, but it's a bit, I don't know, it's a bit 1990s. There's lots of educational uh, microcontroller kits around these days and it's hard to compete. Um, I'm not sure what's uh, set in this one a part at the moment. Um, it's certainly not the hardware, but you do actually have up to five ports available, which isn't too bad, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. It's not uh, pushing my buttons at the moment. No pun intended. All right, I got to the bottom of the box and there is a nice looking uh, user guide for this thing. So let's go in and check it out. And uh, I think we might be a little bit more impressed by this and uh, looks like they do have other different types of modules available but uh, here we go let's get the spiel for it congratulations you have just bought into the world's most flexible range of electronic system development kits that's pretty big core the eblox range is made up more than 150 individual products wow that allow you to learn uh, how electronic systems work and to rapidly develop el electronic systems of your own there you go. It's uh, there are two kinds of um, hardware e-blocks. There's the upstream boards. Is uh, computing term indicates that this is a board that controls the flow of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually device programmers of some kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contains intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It holds the micro. We've seen that. And the downstream boards are the ones that you plug in and contain all of the various functionality. Well, um, software you use depends on the choice of upstream. Uh, boards, uh, we can see compilers, assemblers, and flow code. Oh, okay, so it's a graphical programming tool as well. And uh, curriculum and ap applications. Uh, it looks like you can, yeah, do VHDL, so they've probably got a board with FPGAs or something like that. But yeah, there you go, you can actually get a splitter cable which splits uh, two boards or daisy chain them as we saw before. This is reasonably comprehensive. It goes into the physical properties and how to mount them and stuff like that. It's really well put together, this user manual. I'm actually um, starting to be quite impressed by this. This is really quite nice. Here we go, available e-blocks and accessories. And here's a list of the uh, upstream boards we've got. We've got that uh, top one, the EB006, the PIC Micro MCU Programmer. They've also got a CPLD board, and they've got an FPGA board, the EB049. And I checked, and that contains um, a uh, 6K or a 3K with optional 6K logic element um, Altera Cyclone device. And that is a Cyclone 1, people. Um, that is pretty old hat stuff. I don't know why they're using a Cyclo 1. This must be a really, you know, an old uh, development system. Uh, really, you know, if you're going to do an FPGA, you need a more modern um, Cyclone device. And that's, I don't think that really cuts it these days. Anyway, we've got an ARM microcontroller. All right, what we really need to do here is jump on the Matrix uh, multimedia website and check out these, uh, what boards they've actually got, because there seems to be a massive range here. Uh, they've got terminal boards, sensor interface, LEDs, LCDs, power, 7 seg, uh, USB micro, they've got an IRDA stuff, SPI bus, keypads, RS-232, CPLDs, CAN. Oh man, they've got a breadboard prototyping board, they've got a MIDI interface, they've got a motor controller, they've got a Bluetooth board, excellent LIN board, um, MMC card reader, they've got a PS2 VGA, they've got a voice codec, <gasps> opto isolator, geez, are you uh, <laughs> getting a bit tired of this? They've got a lot. Um, they've got a Zigbee router board, RFID, US, they've really kept up to date here, so I don't know um, what's going on with their FPGA uh, module, we'll take a look at that uh, in a sec, but uh, Pasco Sensible, a graphical display, they've got a LCD module, they've got a GPS board, servo boards, ISM band RFs, RS 485s, oh man, the list goes on and on. It's extremely comprehensive. I am uh, impressed by 
the uh, just the sheer amount availability of the boards. But let's check out this uh, FPGA board, shall we? And here we go. It uses an Altera um, EP1C 6T144C7, and uh, it's got not which has 3,000 logic elements. Optional one, 6,000 logic elements, and that's a Cyclone one. Crazy. Anyway, that's a hundred euros for that board, almost a hundred euros. Wow, these things aren't uh, particularly cheap. Let's go in and take a look at how much, say, the uh, real simple board, the PS2 VGA board is, if you wanted to play with that. 22 euros. There we go. That's not bad. Although I don't know. What's the uh, translation for euros these days? 1.5 Aussie dollars or something? Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is not a particularly cheap kit, but uh, it is looks to be quite comprehensive with the amount of boards you can get, except if you want to get into the FPGA side of things. And of course, it looks like they don't just sell boards, that they sell whole educational experiences, in quote marks, I guess. They've got all these learning tools and development and courseware and stuff like that. So if we go in and uh, have a look at the uh, courseware here, there's some uh, funky looking young dudes with a really uh, cool looking buggy there, remote control probably probably autonomous or something like that and if you go say into the let's go into the bluetooth communications uh courseware stuff let's see what they got hello there we go bluetooth communications and it's course notes there we go you can download well, it looks comprehensive 84 pages and looks like they only give you a 10 page sample is it yeah, you probably well, you probably have to pay to get the full courseware, but that I guess is the attraction of this is that it's a you know the if you're a educator or something like that you don't have to you know, develop the courseware yourself they've all they've developed it all for you. And if you have a look at their flow code thing, it's uh, there it is. Flow code software allows those with little to no programming experience to create complex electronic systems in minutes, and uh, they've got introductions and. Uh, all sorts of stuff for uh, the PIC, AVR, ARM, and DS PIC by the looks of it. And looks like they got an intro video. Here we go. I'm not going to show the whole thing. Hello. Hello. My name is John Dobson. Hello, I'm John Dobson. Managing you. Director at Matrix. Flowcode is an award winning piece of software. Award winning. 2008. Expertise in programming to develop complex electronic systems. Flowcode is designed to develop programs for various microcontrollers, the family of PIC micros, DSPIC and PIC24 micros, the AVR family of microcontrollers. Oh, I could watch this all day. It's got quite a good voice. Shall I learning curve, curve flow curve? For customers and their own use. Yes. Hello world. Our phones and oh, are there we go. Little maze following robot. Flowcode is particularly strong at teaching students how many of the communication systems like Bluetooth and GSM are used by modern electronic devices. Here you can see an example of a project that a number of students Sweet. Students Look at that. This project is a fully working electric vehicle. It includes several CAN bus nodes and is controlled by a Bluetooth. All the technology of this was provided by Flowcode and eBlocks. The British Army uses Flowcode to fulfill a number of learning requirements around the Digital Battlefield Directive. So it looks like you can just download uh, Flowcode here. Ah, license key. There we go. So I was going to say that they're uh, making their money from the hardware. They certainly are because the prices are reasonably high. But they looks like they're going to uh, probably flog you the uh, Flowcode uh, stuff as well because, as I mentioned, that. Uh, kit is around about uh, 600 bucks that they sent me that's what they claim anyway in the uh, documentation so that was for those uh, four boards uh, plus the um, uh, I would I would presume a license for uh, flow code version 5 of the software so there you go it's um it I wasn't impressed at first but when I uh, got to see the uh, the sheer range of number of boards and all the uh, educational material they've got that uh, goes along with it I was pretty impressed in the end with these uh, e-blocks there um, it's very it's not you know a very novel uh, concept it seems uh, quite antiquated with the d9s plugging them on and things like that there's nothing special physically 
or uh, anything like that. But uh, like a, unlike a lot of other uh, electronics learning development uh, modules these days, but uh, I'm sure it uh, backs it all up with that uh, extensive uh, courseware and learning materials and stuff like that. So it's not really something for the hobbyist. It's probably out of the uh, price range of the hobbyist, uh, to be sure, I think. But uh, for educational institutions, it uh, it looks like the bomb. So, well, if you're interested in this sort of thing, check them out. They're at uh, matrixmultimedia.com. Uh, but uh, the um, people who sent me the kit was Elector Electronics, and they'll be selling it uh, through their website. Uh, if it's not available already, it will be available soon. So check it out. And it looks like the price in that uh, documentation as 600 bucks is a little bit uh, wrong. It's actually on the Elector website here as uh, $466. That's the starter kit professional for the pick. And that's exactly the one I got with the USB multi-program and the LED board, the switchboard, and the LCD board. So that is very uh, pricey for the hardware you get, as I've said. But uh, I guess you're paying for all the uh, flow code and other stuff like that. So uh, they do have all these things available on the Elector website. So if you're interested in these things, do check them out. So I hope you like the mailbag. And uh, if you want to send me any shit at all, I don't care, whatever it is, preferably electronic, uh, then send it to the EEV blog at PO Box 7949, Balkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Catch you next time.